All right, so speaking of NV Dims, you're a great straight man, Ray. Thank you. Anything I can do right? to help? Somebody? We have a special interest group within the SNEA. All about NV Dims. This is a wonderful thing, right? Because currently, they are by far the most popular form which can be written to using this model and commercially available, right? So we're collaborating, we the SNEA and the member companies on education, how to communicate the standards, how do you as a vendor differentiate yourself, that sort of thing. So this is a SIG, right, a special interest group within the SNEA. I encourage you to take a look at their work. There's going to be presentations at Storage Developer Conference that this particular SIG is putting on. So three types of NV DIMMs. This is your homework for today. You must be able to recite the three types of NV DIMMs. They are the dash N, the dash F, and the dash P. Don't ask. Right. <laughs> NFP, PFN, and they are different. Right, they are different. NVDIM dash N, guess what? The host is directly accessing DRAM. It's basically half DRAM, half NAND. Right now, this area of NAND, or currently NAND, might be other persistent memory material as time goes by. Currently, it's being implemented in NAND, and that's an N. So if the controller in the middle is negotiating what happens when the power goes out, Right, because now I need an external energy source to move the bits from the DRAM, which the CPU is loading quite happily, into the persistent area of that. So that's why there's a controller on board and it's communicating. By the way, all of these are JEDEC standard. Right, this is not something we made up. It's all JEDEC standard. So half DRAM, half NAND. Right, NVDIM-F, on the other hand, is all flash, hence the dash F. All persistent, no DRAM. XNA on the DRAM. Right? And what you're basically getting, similar to an SSD, is block access to flash, and that flash happens to sit in a memory channel. So it avoids the latency of a PCI Express bus. There are some companies, although not as many as doing the dash N, that are doing this kind of stuff. Right? And again, it's all in uh, JEDEC standardized, so it enables NAND capacity in a memory channel. And then there's the dash P, which is this interesting variant, which is an asymmetric use of DRAM and and again, currently today, NAND and the future other technologies. Basically, as the kids would say, little bit of DRAM, lots of NAND. Right? That's that what kids they would say. say, right? So you're still accessing it through a memory controller, right? And the definition really is still under discussion. So there are no industry available parts, at least as I speak, so that a, there's, implement a dash P. There's a product that was announced a couple years ago called Ultra DIMMs. Where would that fit? Called what? Ultra DIMMs? Not familiar. Oh, ultra dim. So ultra dim is a brand. It's not a type of dim. These are types of dims. So say Jetic. So, right? For one that I do know, Diablo falls into which category right now? There are N. So there are there are companies like that that are doing dash Fs. There that's okay. And it's very clear if you go to the various vendor websites, it's very clear. They, they Some people that. will tell you directly that this is an implementation of dash F. Others won't. Okay. But it's it's so pretty clear which. The ultra dim is a, is a Diablo. Right. Oh, yeah. So there are there are other. I'm not going to mention companies, right? I'm Cookbook, right? This is great. I got an application. <laughs> Yay. Right? If I want to do storage semantics, which is all this stuff, this is great. And I can use NVDIM-Ns, for example, in that way. If I have a persistent memory-based file system or aware file system, I can talk to the NVDIM pretty much straight away. I don't have to go through all the block stuff. Right? Or if I have a direct access enabled file system, in other words, AKA persistent memory aware, right? I can do the same thing. And again, some of the OS vendors are, have implemented this. And then last but not least, right? So is, this is kind of, again, down here at the OS and BIOS level, you know, looking at MRCs and BIOS memory reference codes, NVDIM drivers. So these are what makes these things. Now, importantly, especially for NVDIM dash F, or excuse me, N and P, which have volatile memory on board, the energy module must be able to communicate with this because I want to be able to persist after power loss. This is very important. Typically implemented with supercapacitors, typically, right? There are other implementations, but it also has to have these interesting relationships between these four entities. These basically have to operate as a single unit in order to make this work correctly. Now, application access, again, very simple. Two types. There's disk-like, F and P. There is memory-like, N and P, right? One appears as a disk. The other appears as memory. I don't do I.O. to a memory-like 
semantic. I do CPU load store. Right? So memory like NV dims, in particular the dash N, which is currently the most popular implementation, are a type of persistent memory. Right? And they're available today. Right? Now, what are some of the apps? I'm sorry, we need to go back. <laughs> so you're levels? saying there cannot be a type F memory like NVDIM? There, there, it, it uses block semantics Does because it, it is a block device because it is made out of all block semantic material flash like NAND. Directly. Right? So there must be some translation in the middle, but the application thinks it's a disk. But, but couldn't someone make one that? You'd have to make a translator. Have to make a translator. I mean, you can make it like an inline translator? Could. Right? Okay. But at the end of the day, you have a block device on your hands. Yeah. Right? As opposed to N's and P's, which are not necessarily a block device. The they also have N memory semantics. F and P stuff is very complicated. I know. It's, <laughs> it, three things are hard to deal with. <laughs> it is. Yes. Right. P or NP, I just can't figure it out. It is not an NP complete problem. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so these are wonderful use cases for persistent memory. And you, have, you guys have already alluded to some of them. Right, and here's why, you know, here's why the would use enterprise case. storage be a good use case for NVM dim ends? I can read I can read the slide as well as you. <laughs> <laughs> Already one of our favorite vendors is using persistent memory as a caching device. There you go. Right? I mean I like low latency, I know you do too, all right. I do. Yeah. This is very much, you know. <laughs> Memory channel latencies are pretty low compared to PCI Express latency. Let's just put it that way. Again, persistent data tier, right? Maybe I have a tier of persistency. Maybe I have a lower tier, lower in terms of not as good latency. Maybe I have a even lower tier in terms of not as good latency, right? But guess what? The upper tier is persistent memory. That's my tier one storage. I happen to know a company that does that, just saying. Wouldn't you call it tier zero storage? Uh, you could call it tier minus five. I don't care. I mean, be a Linux <laughs> scheduler. Call it minus 20, the lowest, the highest priority you get. What the hell? So anyway, that's that. Now, kernel support in Linux from 4.2 onward, mostly stable in 4.4. Do you love that caveat there? Mostly stable. But hey, NVDIM modules, QMO support, XFS direct, ext4 direct. All right, so the Linux people are doing their homework on this. All right, so all again, I'm not going to read this slide, but all of these entities now are supported in Linux kernels for, I would say, 4.4 and beyond. 4.2 was really early. All right, and then there's our friends at Microsoft, and again, Tom is on the phone, and Server 2016 supports the DDR4 channel NVDIM N. This is a wonderful thing, all right? In lots of different modes, block modes, Right, just like a really fast I.O. device, and then direct access, the so-called DAX mode. Right, so NTFS dash DAX, so it's aware. This is an example of a PM aware file system. Right, so you're really not doing any I.O. or queuing or async reads, right? You're doing load store. This is memory access. Right, and there are things on channel nine from Microsoft, and the numbers are outstanding. But uh, Tom is a great resource. He's been doing lots and lots of good work on this. And here's an example, tail of the log, I won't go into too much detail, tail, tail of the log in SQL 2016, there's some great information available about that. So in summary, two takes, <coughs> right? This is really, again, this work didn't exist three years ago in the SNEA, but now it does, right? And it's really, we think it's perfect for NV dims, or at least as good as it's gonna get. Again, block and file mode, atomicity, block style IO, persistent mode, memory style, Type in. Again, I don't include the dash P because there are, as of yet, no commercial implementations, but there will be, <clears throat> I bet. And then, so use the programming model with NVDIMs. Again, the Linux and the Windows folks are, right? There's lots of support now in libraries like pmem.io, for example, for this. So enabling a path forward for applications. Again, this is one of the reasons why we're doing the model. Because we want to, we the SNEA, we want to help lead the way in non-volatile memory optimized Software. We don't think it's good enough to just, you know, throw the NVM there and say, okay, that's great, and not change any of the software. To really get the benefit, we want to help people change your software. Wasn't that fun? I mean, this yeah. is all predicated to some extent on the fact that you were going to have two different styles of memory in the same system. But you could actually have a system which just non-volatile memory. You could. 
It might cost. Maybe uh, some somebody will do that. It might cost an right. arm and a leg. I want to give Rochelle her time, so. Okay. okay.